So who's up for a fun, quick and easy photography project that will help you create images that look like these? You can see that where you would normally have circles of light in the background, we have now changed those into the shape of a heart. But you can actually create shaped bokeh in any shape that you want. So you could create star-shaped bokeh or even festive Christmas tree bokeh or even Mickey Mouse bokeh if that's what you want. You can create anything that your little heart desires. So that's what you're going to learn today, how to create a DIY photo filter that is going to help you be able to create shaped bokeh. And don't worry, I don't have time for long drawn out craft projects. So if you don't either, don't worry, we can do this in less than five minutes. Do stay until the end though, because I'll also be sharing some tips for your camera settings for taking images of shaped bokeh. So I'm going to teach you how to make one of these and then I'm going to show you how you can create the images with that shaped bokeh in the background. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up if you like it and be sure to subscribe to the channel where I share even more photography tips, editing tutorials, everything you need in order to take gorgeous photos of your children, your family and the world around you. Well, let's get back to today's project and you're only going to need three things to create this DIY photo filter. You're going to need some black paper, kind of thicker paper, but still just paper. You don't need that to be card or anything. You're going to need a pair of scissors so you can cut out some shapes and you're going to need a roll of sticky tape so you can stick the whole thing together. Now, I do want to say right now, before we start, none of this needs to be perfect. So if you can look at my finished product, it kind of looks a little bit ropey, but as you can see, it does the job. So don't worry about perfection when you're making this filter. So the first step is just simply to take your black paper and then I just want you to cut off a strip of paper from the side. So we want that to be around two and a half inches uh, thick. And what we're going to do with this is essentially just wrap this around our lens to create a kind of sheath. So you're literally gonna take that piece of paper, wrap it around your lens like that, and then you're just gonna hold that in place with a piece of sticky tape so that we've created a kind of sheath for our lens. And you should end up with something simple like that where you can just slip that on over the top of your lens and take that back off. So you can use that filter on different lenses as well. Step number two is to take the sheet of black paper and what I want you to do is simply trace around your lens. So you're gonna lay that down flat and then you're just going to trace a circle just around the diameter there of your lens. And then I want you to create another circle around that, which is just about two inches, two and a half inches around that. So you're going to end up with something like this, where you have the diameter of your lens there as a circle. And then you've created just about two and a half, two and a half inches further, a rough circle around that. So you're going to have two circles there. And what we're going to do now is just cut around this outer circle. So you'll end up with something like this. Once you've done that, you have the circle diameter of your lens and then you've basically cut around that. Now you can see just how ropey that, that cutting is. It's not exactly a perfect circle. But as I said, this doesn't need to be perfect at all. You can spend more time on it if you want, but generally you just need to create a rough kind of shape there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut in from the outer circle to the inner circle, just creating slits all the way around. So literally from the outer circle to the inner circle, creating slits. And we're gonna do this all the way around. And I'll actually just do that really quickly just now because it only takes seconds. And that is going to create kind of flaps that you are going to be able to move down. So you'll see that all the way around, I now have these flaps because they're going to kind of bend over the sheath that we created back in step one. So the next thing that you need to do is take this uh, circle with flaps that you've created and in that middle of that circle that you traced around your lens, you are going to put in the shape 
that you want your bokeh to be. So if you want heart-shaped bokeh, you're going to put a heart. If you want star-shaped bokeh, you're going to use a star and so on. Now, I just do this using a pair of scissors. Um, if you want something a little bit more complicated, for example, like a festive Christmas tree, then you might want to use something like an X-Acto knife. I found that I can create a heart shape and a star shape and just basic shapes just by using a pair of scissors. So a kind of really easy way to do this is just kind of fold that in half, for example, for creating a half, just roughly fold that in half. And then you can just cut out sort of half a heart shape here. It's going to do this a little bit roughly. And you can see I have my heart shape. Now, I do want you to make this reasonably large. Remember, the light does need to come in through your camera. So about this size, what would I say? That would be about one and a half, one to one and a half inches. You want the size of that to be possibly even a little bit larger. So um, do make sure that you create a large enough uh, shape. You don't want a tiny little one, light's got to come in through this. So we do want to make this reasonably large. As I say, probably about one and a half inches should be around about the right size. So the final step is simply to attach that circle that you've just made with the shape and you're gonna attach that to the shape. So you're literally just gonna put that circle so that it matches uh, the circle that you've traced out here on the paper and so that the shape you've created is right in the center of that and then you're just going to move these flaps over and then sellotape them down into place so you're attaching this to this and what you should end up with is something like this where we have the shape then we have folded all those flaps down, sellotaped them into place, and we have our shape there right in the center. And that is your DIY photo filter. So we can take this and just kind of slip that on to our lens, ready to take images of our shaped bokeh. So we'll move on to the camera settings for taking your images with that shaped bokeh. But for now, let me know in the comments below did making that seem really easy? Is it something that you're going to do? If you've got any questions at all, of course, you can also leave those in the comments below. But do let me know whether that seemed easy enough and that's something that you're going to make. But now I promised you some tips and camera settings for getting that shaped bokeh. So that's what we'll move on to now. So the first tip is to make sure that you're using either manual mode or aperture priority mode. And that's because you're going to want to be able to choose your own aperture. Now, ideally you want to shoot in manual mode so you've got control over your other settings as well. But if you're not quite there yet, that's absolutely fine. You can absolutely use aperture priority mode for this. Now, if you're not sure about aperture priority mode, you haven't used that before, then we do have an aperture priority mode cheat sheet that will help you with that. You can find a link to that in the description description below this video so make sure that you pick that up if you're new to shooting in aperture priority mode. So the second tip is to use the largest aperture you can. So that's using a small F number. Now, when I say using the largest aperture you can, I don't mean the widest that your lens will go to. I mean the largest aperture you can use based on what you're photographing. So whatever you have in front of that Christmas tree or whatever you're using to create that circles of light, it could be a wall of fairy lights, for example, then uh, whatever you're photographing, make sure you can choose the correct aperture to make sure you get all of that in focus. So you're going to probably want to use something around f2.8. You can certainly use f2.2, f1.4, or you'll still get shaped bokeh there even using something like f4.5. Tip number three is to make sure that you put some distance between the subject that you're photographing and the lights in the background. Because the more distance you have, the bloodier those circles are going to be, the larger they're going to be, and the more pronounced you're gonna get that shaped bokeh. So you can play with the distance, but the more distance you have between your subject and those lights, then the bloodier that background, and therefore the better shapes you're going to get in your shaped bokeh photo.
And my final tip is for those of you who would like to create that out of focus bokeh shapes, but without the subject in front of it. So something that looks a little bit more like this example here. If you want to create that, that's really easy to do. All you need to do is switch your lens from AF to MF. And then you can just use this focusing ring to get those shapes to the out of bloodiness level that you would like. So you don't really need something in front of there. Just check, turn that lens from autofocus to manual focus and then use that focusing ring and you'll see the shapes uh, or the points of light turning into those shapes and you can choose the level of bloodiness for them that you would like. Now, last week's video was about three different ways to photograph Christmas lights. I suggest you give that a watch too and the video on how to create a blurred background in photography. Both of those are going to help you with getting this shaped bokeh and other ways that you can photograph your Christmas lights this year. Next week we have another festive themed video coming up so do make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get notified every time we release a new video which is every week. So that's it for me for this week. I will see you again in next week's video. Bye for now.